Christy, Salty Stitcher. It is Friday, November 11th. It is Veterans Day. Uh, and I am back after a few months for a floss tube video. Uh, and uh, this is going to be, I guess, a fairly traditional floss tube video today. It's floss tube number 46. Uh, and you probably noticed that Salty Mom and Salty Stitcher, or Salty Sister, uh, are not here today. Uh, they were engaged. My sister, Angie, she had to work and mom is, uh, busy with my dad, um, at home. So, uh, you get me today, uh, which is great because I have a lot after two months, I have a lot of updates, uh, for you. Uh, first we're going to start, let's see today's, this is, well, I'll start from the beginning. This is a channel about cross stitch uh, and sometimes other crafts, but today it's gonna be uh, strictly cross stitch. And uh, the outline is gonna look something like a few store announcements, uh, some FFOs, um, sneak peek into my new designs that I've been working on. Uh, let's see, I have a few works in progress and we will dabble in some plans for the rest of 2022. And I'm still thinking about 2023 plans. And I think I'll save that video um, for when uh, Angie is back and we can talk about her plans as well. And I know uh, Salty Mom, she has, she's been working on a lot of things. I'm so proud of her. She has like three whips going. And, um, and I know some of you have a lot more whips than that, but for her, three whips is huge. Uh, and she has started stitching on 18 count Ada and uh, 28 count linen. And uh, it is just awesome to see. So a little bit more on that uh, a little bit later. Um, so first I'll go into some store announcements. So uh, I have been working on a bunch of new designs. Um, I finally FFO'd a few items. Uh, that I'd love to show you that are uh, now in my shop. Um, and I'll fill you in along the way on uh, things that I've uh, things that I've been doing. Um, so let's go right into it. So first store announcement, I'm really excited to announce that uh, I will be having a Black Friday and a Cyber Monday sale this year. Uh, so keep an eye out uh, on my Facebook page, Instagram account. Uh, the sale is gonna run for about a week from the 22nd of November to 30 uh, November. It'll be 25% off all of the PDFs in PDF patterns in my uh, Etsy shop. So uh, head on over to my Etsy shop. If you've been holding out, uh, wanted to purchase, wanted to just look around and purchase one of my patterns, you'll get a great deal on the uh, from the 22nd to the 30th. The whole sale is going to run for about a week. So again, 25% off. Um, the Starting on the 22nd, the code, coupon code will be HOLIDAY. Uh, so just throw in HOLIDAY um, in, the, in the code when you check out uh, of Etsy and you should get 25% off. So yeah, just stop on by. If you haven't been there, just stop on by, take a look. Um, I'm referring to my notes. I have a full page here for you. Um, let's see. Okay. Some FFOs. So I have two right here behind me. I decided to add a little bit of flair behind me while I was, uh, in, in this spot, which is not the ideal stitching or uh floss tube spot, but it works for me because I have all of my patterns around me. My stitching spot is just behind the camera here. So we're just going to stick with it, uh, right now. But so our, my first, FFO, and it's also one of my new designs, is the Abstract Pineapple. Uh, so this pattern is a lot of fun. Um, it is stitched on a 40 count, and I want to say this is the Under the Sea fabric, and it's a linen, and I used all DMC variegated uh, threads. Um, and in fact, this pattern, I was just practicing some different threads or teaching myself some different threads. So it's almost like a sampler of sorts. 
uh, while it's really hard to see, all of the green variegated, just one, one color DMC variegated, um, and it's in a half stitch. So, um, and it's mostly stitched in basket weave, if you're familiar with that, that basket weave technique. Um, so a lot of fun. Uh, the pineapple itself is full crosses, just another DMC variegated. Let's see how close I can get without the reflection of the light. Yep, full cross. And then I have a little bit of satin stitch right here for these top. Uh, I think I just have a different pattern of stitch here. I think it's called long short stitch. Um, and then I just have a few other stitches. Uh, oh, this is some black work called some black work and then some long short stitch. Um, all very easy to do. This is all basic stuff and in the pattern. I don't have it printed out for me, but in the pattern, it, it um, shows you uh, a, a, a zoomed in version of the stitch. And then, you know, if you're not into these different stitches, just do full cross. Um, I think the pattern will look beautiful in uh, whatever you decide to, however you decide to stitch it. Uh, as I was taught, I showed um, Gary and Ronnie with Garon Stitchery a sneak peek of this. And uh, it was before I had filled in the center and they really liked just the green pineapple with the um, fabric in the background. So that's another option of stitching this, but this is abstract pineapple. This is at, um, you can order the paper pattern through your local needle workshop. And I know Garon Stitchery already has it. Uh, Hoffman Distributing and Yarn Tree are carrying my patterns now. So uh, if you're a shop owner and want to order this for your shop, you can go through them as well, or you can email me directly. And the PDF version uh, is in my Etsy shop. So that is uh, also available. I do not sell hard copies. I leave that uh, to the local needle workshop. So yeah, so this is abstract pineapple. Um, probably should have started off with this. So I took a, there's a bridge. So my husband and I were visiting Kauai in Hawaii and near the timeshare that we were staying at, there was this little pedestrian and bike bridge and it overlooked an inlet uh, looking out towards the water. And the design in the bridge was this pineapple. So this, this, uh, this pattern was a um, inspired by that picture that I took. And I can put that picture in probably at the end of the video. Um, but essentially I was looking through the side of the railing on this pedestrian and bike bridge in, in the middle of the outlet out towards, out towards the ocean. Uh, so abstract pineapple, if you wanna stitch it, you want to play with some specialty stitches or not choice is yours and this one is available i'm not going to attempt to put that up yet just yet uh and my second ffo i'm really proud of this one this is the compass rose so i've been thinking about uh this pattern for a while uh, it is 100 by 100 stitches. It used two, uses two colors of Trinway silk. So I have partnered with uh, Susan Dubois and of Trinway silks and her, her silks are fantastic. Uh, fantastic to work with. They were so smooth. Um, each, uh, let's see, it's also stitched on 36 count uh, forbidden fibers and in dovetail. Uh, and so I have predominantly just two Trinway silks, the blue and the gold. Uh, but you could also stitch this if you wanted in all blue, all gold. Um, really, really your choice. It's really a quick stitch. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I finished this in a um, Michael's shadow box. And I just put some extra sea glass that I had. Uh, and then I found these really colorful. At first I thought I was going to put some starfish in the pattern, starfish beads in the pattern, um, but it really didn't work out. So I just tossed them in with the sea glass. 
down here. And uh, yeah, I really love this. Um, if you like to stitch on 40 count or 46 count, it, it can be a great small for a retreat. Um, really, it'll it'll look good on any uh, any fabric. So that is the Compass Rose. And I also have some uh, silk thread packs available. So right now I have two available on my Etsy site. Um, two available on my Etsy site, but uh, Susan is dying me some more um, of the color. I think I bought every skein that, that she had. Uh, so I do have two thread packs available, but um, until I get more in stock, I'd love to point you in the direction of Garon Stitchery because uh, I, I sent them some a little while back when I released the pattern. I'd love for you to go purchase purchase from them. Uh, but here is uh, the silk, and this is 9514, the color. And then this is the Morning Glory, which is probably one of my favorite blues. And you can see there's some uh, greens in there, so a little bit of hints of purple. Oh, there, there it's shining, showing up really well. Um, and because I stitched this on 36 count, and I like to use two threads uh, on 36 count, and I stitched it over two, um, I needed two skeins of the blue, needed two skeins of the blue. So if you're stitching on 40 count, 46 count, anything higher than that, you may only need one skein of blue. But if you're gonna do the entire pattern in blue, um, then I would, get, I would get two skeins. And really this blue does not go to waste. I would use this in probably any of my patterns. So again, this is a uh, compass rose. Uh, same thing applies as Abstract Pineapple. It is in my Etsy shop as a PDF. And I have two thread packs available until uh, Susan can send me the rest. And then uh, the hard copies are at your local Nita workshop, uh, available through the distributors. Um, and I know uh, I sent a few to uh, Garon Stitchery. So uh, go ahead and order through them. They, they ship really fast. All right, so I'm gonna hit pause on the um, recording now just for a minute so I can put these back up and we'll continue. Okay, so uh, so that was FFOs. Um, now I'm gonna just take a break here and show you a few um, scissor fobs that I have. Uh, and this is, um, I pulled a, I was just up in my um, craft room putting a few things away. And I noticed that I had a few extra uh, Christmas scissor fobs that I thought you might enjoy. Uh, so these are $10 each. Uh, and the first one uh, I have is the snowman. Now I have a limited count of, of these. I think I only have maybe three I'm looking at, three or four of the snowman. I have the, um, little gumball one and I have the mint. Uh, so if anyone wants to purchase these, um, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email will be down in the description box. Uh, these are $10 each for the holidays. These, these will make great little stocking stuffers. Um, you can toss it in with a card. Um, they're really cute. I have a few of these, so this will be first come first serve. Uh, so if you'd like the mint, go ahead and shoot me an email, the snowman or the gumball and, uh, salty stitcher, Angie, uh, she, uh, she makes these by hand. So these are, um, gorgeous and yeah, shoot me an email if you'd like them while supplies, uh, while supplies last and I'll get them out to you um, here in the next week or so. Um, okay, so we'll, let's move on to, uh, I'm gonna do a sneak peek now uh, of some new designs uh, that I've been working on and now I am stitching. Uh, the first one 
It is a kitty cat, and I'm really excited about this one. This one is, um, let's turn that light back on. Uh, this one's a lot has been a lot of fun so far. Um, one of my cats, uh, this is based off of one of my cats name. Uh, her name was Eleanor. Uh, she has since passed on, uh, but we had Eleanor for about 18 years. And uh, she was always one to get into all of the thread and yarn. And uh, she was just a spunky little cat. Rescue, of course. Um, uh, so this is Permore. And uh, the caption says, Permore, his last since little cat playing with a ball of yarn um, uh, in a garden. Uh, and just, you know, just some fun, um, some fun butterflies, some flowers, a cat in a typical cat pose uh, playing. And let's see, so stitch count is 125 by 86. And this pattern uses eight DMC or sulky colors. And I am stitching it using uh, sulky thread. And here are the sulky threads. Nice bright colors. This should be ready uh, by springtime. So this is an amazing springtime gift. And this is the start of the kitty. And I am stitching this on a Fortnite fabric, 36 count Fortnite fabric stately um, at linen. And I just uh, loved this color. I uh, I've also I also have a mock-up where you can stitch it on some blue fabric. I think the colors really pop on both. Um, so let's see if we get a close up. Yep, so that's my kitty. It's coming together here nicely with some of the let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's better. So again, 36 count uh Fortnite fabric stately. And uh, so that's a, a quick peek um, for per more. That should be uh, in my Etsy shop probably a little bit uh, after Christmas. Um, really nice little uh, springtime pattern. I might get in there before, but but we'll see. I always like to stitch it before I um, before I post it in uh, many cases, just so I can catch uh, any errors that might be in the chart. So. Yeah, so that's a quick peek and uh, one of one of my new designs and and uh, one of my whips that I've been working on. And let's see, we'll go with a second quick peek. And this is also going to be, let's see, this is probably going to be on. Wow, did I pull a. Not sure I meant to pull a 46 count fabric, uh, but I think I was, uh, I think I'm going to place this next one on um, a 40 count Fortnite fabric magnificent. Um, so this is going to be for my next pattern. And it's called A Loveliness of Ladybugs. Uh, so I'm still kind of stitching. Um, well, the Hawaii is still kind of the um, inspiration for a lot of my patterns. Uh, and this one in particular is um, inspired by the golf course in Hawaii that I love to play on. So Koalina uh, Golf Course, it's on Oahu. It's on the West End uh, of the island. Uh, their, their symbol for the golf course is a ladybug. Um, and in pure fashion, there is always, I always find a ladybug crawling on my golf ball when I play there at Koalina. So they're everywhere on the course. And, and if, you, if you've if you ever played that course, you also know that they're famous for their family of black swans um, that are also running around the golf course uh, and they can be pretty intimidating. But yeah, so loveliness of ladybugs. So the collective noun for ladybugs uh, and so you can either stitch it in two ways. So the first design, and both both of these designs will come with the pattern, um, is you can stitch it like this. So it just goes a loveliness of ladybugs, goes in a circle, uh, which is one that can be framed. Um, but then you can also stitch it as a biscornu. So if you think of this 
as the top. And then you can read it, a loveliness of ladybugs as it goes around. So this would be the top of the Biscornu. Um, and then I have these, and each pattern will come with a cute ladybug. Let's see if we, yeah, there we go. A cute ladybug bead. Uh, is, so if you decide to stitch the Biscornu, that this little bead can be the center of the Biscornu. So I think I bought a couple boxes. So the first 150, 200 patterns will come with the with the little ladybug uh, bead with it. So little little cute ladybug. So that's the loveliness of ladybugs. And I have um, one, two, three, four, five, five um, sulky threads. There'll also be a DMC conversion um, and a, a sulky thread pack for it. So. Uh, that will be coming probably around the first of the year as well. So a couple, um, couple springtime uh, projects heading your way. I'm really excited um, about that. And let's see, we're going to move into whips next. So the uh, first whip I'm going to show you today are my temperature charts. Uh, so I've been working on these periodically. I'm about... I'm one of them, I'm about a month behind. Um, there's just not enough time in the day uh, right now, uh, especially with the run-up to the holidays. So I'm going to try and get caught up on these. I'm going to take these on my next trip. Um, so we'll start off with uh, the one that I'm about a month behind on, which is my uh, Uluru temperature chart with... Stitching Mommy's Temperature Balloons. Um, so, this is, so I designed the bottom part, Uluru, down here. So this is my design. Uh, Uluru, or Ayers Rock, um, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in uh, Australia, um, about four hours from, four and a half hours from Alice Springs, which is in the center of the country. Um, really important historical landmark, um, important to the indigenous uh, people there. Uh, and then uh, typically they fly some hot air balloons over there. So I, I um, saw Stitching Mommy's hot air balloon temperature chart and I thought that would be perfect to have right over Uluru. Um, so since uh, Australia is in the Southern hemisphere, a lot of uh, the temperatures are opposite. Uh, so right here, this is January, February, uh, March. And as you can see, it's pretty warm that time of year. Uh, and there here, this was our summertime, uh, June, July, August timeframe, a uh, little chilly in the desert. And now we're starting, the temperatures are starting to come back up again. Uh, but I'm about a month behind, so uh, just plugging away at this temperature chart. This one will be for my husband to kind of commemorate his uh, time in Alice in Alice Springs. So that is my first whip, and uh, definitely going to get caught up on that. But I'll I'll tell you why I'm falling behind on some of these things. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so that was the first one. Uh, the second temperature chart that I'm working on is for my own location in um, Southern California here. So Los Angeles County, uh, San Pedro area, it's by the water and by the uh, two main ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Uh, and <laughs> I um, I probably should have thought, thought this through a little bit uh, more, but Southern California temperatures are pretty temperate and usually stay in the 70s and high 70s, low 80s most of the time. Um, so this, my chart is mostly yellow. I, I didn't think I would have mostly yellow and greens, but um, that is Southern California for you. Uh, the weather doesn't change too much day to day. You could see there were some hot days um, right around here for summer. Um, but yeah, it's starting to cool off. I'm a few, few weeks behind here, but I think I'm gonna start getting some uh, more greens and blues um, as I come around. So in this particular pattern, 
starts in the center and it just spirals spirals out. Um, so you can see in January, we started with some cool temperatures, uh, but then it quickly got back up into uh, the 70s, a couple of days of 80. Um, and then we've just been, you know, high 80s or uh, high 70s and low 80s, except for a couple of days here where we were in the 90s. Oh, so that is my temperature chart here. Pretty cool design. I don't, I don't know if I will use this design again, um, but we'll talk more about that in my 2023, 2023 plans. Um, okay, so that was the temperature chart. Uh, the other thing that I was working on, a, another year-long project, um, I don't know what was going on in January where I felt the need to start a bunch of year-long projects, but uh, this is from Snarky and Modern embroidery, I think, or snarky and modern cross stitch. Uh, this is their black work sow. Um, this was um, a completely, it was a free sow, but then you could buy the um, thread pack, uh, which I did thread in the, actually you could buy the kit, which I ended up buying the kit. Um, and this has been a lot of fun learning how to do a lot of the black work and um, understand all the different kinds of patterns that you could put uh, in one black work design. So each um, small hexagon uh, represents one week. Um, so now we're down to weeks 40, 41, and 42. I'm about three weeks behind. Uh, so the last one down in the bottom left there was, I think, week 39. Um, so I will get caught up on that this weekend and uh, should be up to date. And I think we take one, one week off, one or two weeks off. Um, but this has been a lot of fun. This is stitched on 16 count ADA uh, and using DMC, DMC floss. So I really enjoy that. I think I've decided, um, I think I've decided that I'm gonna make this into a very large throw pillow. Um, th this would be very large. This is a really big piece to frame. So I think this is gonna be a really great throw pillow. Uh, that'll be um, a nice accent to any room. So uh, that is the plan for the for the black work sal. And um, by the time we get together with uh, Salty Mom and Salty Sister, uh, I probably should have this up to date. Okay. And now my last whip, the one the one whip that is sucking all of the air out of the room and also all of my time uh, is the lions. Uh, I have a goal to finish the lions before the end of the year. Um, it showed up on my WIPCO board, I think, I'm looking at my WIPCO one, two, three, four times. And my business rule uh, on WIPCO was that if I finished a pattern early, prior to the number that was called, I would replace it with the lions. So that is what I've been doing. And I have been on a bender with the lions and really trying to push through. I have about three pages left um, on the lions, maybe two full pages and a couple, couple small row pages. Um, so for those of you who are just joining me for the first time, the lions are, it, it is my first cross stitch project or pattern that I ever designed. It used a very inexpensive, I think maybe pick to pat app on the phone. Um, I did. I knew nothing about converting pictures to cross stitch. So this this occurred in two thousand and nineteen. Uh, I took this picture, and I'll put the picture in um, uh, either at the front. Uh, of the video or the end of the video. Uh, but I took this picture while on a cruise to South Africa and we did a safari and came across some uh, a pack of white lions just sitting in the sunshine, taking a nap in the middle of the day. Uh, so you have a lot of reflection. And um, again, I have been working on this for about 19, 20, 20, 22, three years now. Uh, and I vowed, I promised my husband that I would, uh, that I would finish it. Uh, and essentially, so I took the picture and I was on a cruise ship and my husband dared me to make it into a cross stitch and stitch it for him. And I'm 
yeah, sure. There's a, there's an app for that. So, um, so three years later, here we are. I know a lot of you have seen this, but it's getting really exciting. Um, the last time I showed you, we were just starting this lion. There, there are four lions in this picture. So the first one up is up here. This is her nose and this is her body going all the way across. It's the first lion. The second lion is right here. The third lion I've been stitching on the body for about a year now. <laughs> Finally got to her face and she is right here. And the fourth lion, there's a male lion uh, back here. Just so that the computer program didn't do a great job converting a lot of the colors. But, uh, you know, you live and you learn. And um, by the time I got down there and figured it out, and by the time I got experienced enough to figure it out, uh, I was, you know, two, you know, a year and a half into this project and I was not uh, stopping it. So we're going to finish it and um, pretty excited. I'm all the way over here, just finished up the lion's face. Uh, this is the end of this particular page. I want to say page 27, give or take. Um, there is one more big page. So this is the length of one page. So there's one more big page down here and then plus a two, two columns to go all the way across. And then I almost lost my needle. And then there is two columns to go all the way across. So I would say I have maybe roughly two, two full pages left on the lions. Now, typically, if I'm sprinkling other projects in, typically it takes me about one month per page. Um, and that's if I'm just sprinkling all other projects in. I have November, rest of November and December to finish one page, one, I'd say one and a half pages of stitching. So it is totally doable. This is going to be a full court press. I have, um, uh, vacation coming up to see my husband in Australia, uh, starting in Singapore. So I've got a flight to Singapore to work on this. So good 15, 16 hours, uh, on a plane to work on the lions. I've got a flight back in there and we are hopping on a cruise ship. So I, I should have a little bit of stitching time and there are a couple to sea days. So the lions are coming with me on my vacation and I hope to finish this. Um, I started this on a cruise ship and my goal is to finish it, finish it on the cruise ship. So I'm so excited. The lions almost done. Um, so I will take a picture and also uh, put it in there if you want to take a closer look. Uh, this is stitched on 14 count Ada. Uh, it is using DMC floss. There are about 70 colors uh, in here. I have no idea how much thread I've used on this. I started stitching when I, I asked my mom, some of you know the story, but I'll tell it anyway. I asked my mom, said, mom, what, what kind of, what, what thread do I use? What fabrics? Oh, 14 count Ada. I'm like, well, how many threads? And she's like, oh, use three threads. People, this thing is like five pounds right now worth of thread. There is so much thread in this project. I stopped counting skeins. I have no idea how much thread is in here. Um, it is a lot. And when I started off, I was not the um, uh, neatest stitcher. So on the back here, there's like carrying stuff all over the place. I mean, there is just, gosh, at some point I'm going to have to guesstimate how much, uh, how much thread is in this, but so the lions is almost done. I know, hopefully I, I think you might be cheering me on, on the, uh, on the backside of this floss tube. So, uh, I will keep you updated, um, and post a few pictures as I go. Uh, and so keep an eye on my Instagram account. Uh, while I'm on the cruise ship, I'm probably not going to be able to, uh, 
probably not going to be able to post many videos, but I will be posting some Instagram account uh, on my, some Instagram posts um, on the lions and my progress uh, as we work through it. So there we go. Um, okay. Let's go into some haul and then I will finish up uh, with a few 2022 plans um, and go from there. Uh, okay, so let's go with, where's the haul? Okay. All right, so um, let's see, it was, we had Needlework Expo and then there was Needlework Galleria. Um, I participated in Needlework Expo, but I also um, uh, placed an order uh, through Garon Stitchery. And the first one that I purchased uh, is Autumn Quakers by Rosard Manor. And I'm not typically a fall kind of stitcher. I, I try and... <laughs> I mean, I just showed you the lions where there's a lot of brown, but I typically try and shy away from the, the darker browns and everything. But when this stitches up, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, and I also purchased the thread pack. And I just blanked on the type of thread. So it is Valdani three stranded and it's over dyed. And look at these colors, those look gorgeous. So, so when you actually look at this stitched, it is not as dark, um, not as dark as it looks in the picture. Uh, these silks just look absolutely beautiful. So I will probably try and pick a lighter, lighter fabric uh, just so that they pop a little bit more. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about the Autumn Quakers. Um, Autumn Quaker, they're nice. Uh, you can, you know, make make a few goals out of the motifs there. Um, yeah, so that was part of uh, part of the haul. The second one, uh, so this was Ink Circles, Tracy Horner's new design, um, Stars of Sumatra. I really love this design. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. It's 269 by 269, but yeah, you guys know that I'm not a, I'm not afraid of um, bigger projects. And then uh, what I really loved about this is that there was also uh, some silk that came with it, Gloriana silk, uh, and it is Royal Plum Light. Uh, so I also purchased the silk pack to go with it. And look at all of those colors. That is just gorgeous. So that is uh, Ink Circles, Star of Sumatra, plus the Thread Pack. Uh, I also really fell in love with this pattern by Primitive Hair, and it's the Wheel of the Year. Um, this looked like a lot of fun. Eventually I will get, get to it, but I just love those colors. Um, just something about this pattern that, that really, uh, that really spoke to me. It could be my obsession with Outlander. Um, it could be, I'm not so sure, but it, it just looks, looks like a lot of fun to stitch as well. Um, okay, uh, and then the final pattern is a mermaid. I have a similar mermaid from the, the primitive hair that I haven't started yet, uh, but this one looked like a, beautiful companion to it. So this is Cosmic Mermaid. And I don't know when I'm going to start her, but but she looked absolutely beautiful. And I bet she's, you know, the picture doesn't do it justice, but I bet she is stunning. Um, stunning stitch. So that is that. And then I have one more that I'm going to take with me. And this kind of falls into maybe leads us into a bit of uh, 2022 plans. Uh, again, I have a big plane ride coming up. 
Um, I don't usually do a lot of holiday stitching. It's it's kind of not my not my thing. Um, maybe that's why I didn't put out a floss tube in October because I really didn't have a lot of Halloween uh, stitching going on. Uh, but I do have a bit of Christmas and <laughs> I don't, I, I love Christmas and I love Christmas trees and I love Christmas decorations. I just have cats and I don't know about you, but my cats like to climb the trees. Uh, so when I saw this little uh, Dirty Annie's pattern at um, Needlework Expo, um, and it was really quick. I just had to, I had to buy it and, and stitch it. So it says, oh my God, tree. And they got me a whole tree. And that cat just looks like she has some mischief in mind and she's gonna climb that Charlie Brown looking tree. So I figured I could do this on the plane or even in the airport waiting on the plane. It's the count is 65 by 65. Very quick stitch. Um, I do need to, I don't, I don't think I have the classic color works, but I'm sure I have a suitable substitute for it. Um, so I'm going to get this up, take it with me. Um, uh, that looks like a lot of fun. So, so that's my haul. Oh, no, no one more piece of haul. Um, my 2023 book of days came in. Uh, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'm going to take this with me and do a bit of planning um, for 2023 in it. Uh, this is my 2022 book of days. Uh, I take it with me everywhere and it is now missing a cover uh, and it is kind of seeing better days. Um, I mostly uh, track my temperatures and temperature charts. So this is my haven't filled it in for for November, but October, you can see I'm tracking all my temperature pieces. I track uh, the WIPCO numbers on here and um, whatever else I need to write down. But uh, I noticed the other day that a pen exploded on the cover and luckily that's the only remnants, but the cover didn't make it. <laughs> so um, luckily we're in November, so uh, yeah. 2022's Book of Days has served me well, um, but she's fallen apart pretty quickly. Uh, so anyway, so I'm glad 2023 came in. It might be time to transition maybe a little bit early on that. Um, okay, so I'm going to quickly run through some plans. I, this has probably been a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but uh, we'll run through some 2022 plans and then 2023 plans I'll save for um, the next video and hopefully I'll get another uh, quick video out um, with mom and Ange, my sister. Uh, and we'll talk, we'll all talk plans. Um, and uh, yeah, mom's got some great projects. So I can't wait for you to see it. And while I was there, I went back to Florida to visit mom and dad for a bit. And um, yeah, I went diving into their closet again. So We'll bring back the segment, what I found in mom's closet, uh, which is always exciting and always um, interesting to see what she has uh, tucked away uh, in there. So, okay, so Whipgo, let's go with, well, yeah, we can start with Whipgo. Um, so Whipgo for, uh, let's see, November was number 12 in 24. So this is my Whipco board for 2022. Uh, so 12, spot number 12 was the Lions. Um, and I met that goal of a thousand stitches on the Lions. And 24 was Science is Real. Um, that I already finished and gave to Aunt Judy. And she made it into a beautiful, a beautiful pillow. Um, I'm not sure I uh, put that picture in, so I'll put that picture in as well. Let me make a note, Aunt Judy, pillow. And then since we already know November's numbers, we know that December is going to be number four and 23. Uh, so number four is the nautical sampler. 
And number 23 is Maya Angelou. Um, I've already finished at least the first iteration of Maya Angelou. So um, if I finish one, everything reverts back to the lions. So, um, so for November, I've got a thousand stitches on the lion. So science, I got 2000 stitches. I've got the nautical sampler that I'm going to try and work on before I leave. And then my Angel I finished. So that's, and that's in December. So that's 3000 stitches on the lions. Sadly, that is not going to get me to a finish. So I've got to put a lot more than 3000 stitches in, but we're going to go for it. Um, for October, Lady of the Flag popped up. Um, and I have her on here several times, so I don't recall what October's numbers were. Uh, but Lady of the Flag popped up, but I worked on the Lions instead. So um, I am a little bit behind and have to go back and work on Lady of the Flag. Uh, if you don't know what Lady of the Flag looks like, there she is. She's gorgeous. This is all a beautiful pattern. I always get a kick because this is the original pattern and it has $12 up here. Um, and this is out of print and I don't think I've ever seen it for $12. Um, but Lady of the Flag, she is coming along. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to stick with the original or do the blue conversion. I have the um, threads and the beads for, for both the blue and the original. I just haven't decided yet, but this is how far I am on Lady of the Flag, and it is just amazing. I'm always amazed by how um, all of the blues are coming together in the shadowing, and um, yeah, it's just it's just gorgeous. So that is Lady of the Flag so far. I need to put a thousand more stitches in to meet my whip go goal uh, for the year, and then this is my nautical sampler. This is my own design. I really like this. It has the entire nautical alphabet. It has the numbers down at the bottom. It has a saying from a very old um, poem about the uh, Clamperdown, which is a, a British frigate. And then just has all of the um, little motifs that I enjoy stitching. So it's got a compass rose, bowl of berries that the uh, parrot is um, guarding, a pineapple sailboat, um, it's got the Southern Cross in it and a couple sea creatures down at the bottom. So this is a nautical sampler. This is, um, also in my Etsy shop and available. It uses sulky thread. So once I'm done, I will have a sulky thread pack available for it. And I'm stitching it on 40 count under the sea fabrics. Anne, Ein, Annie, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, but I'm still working on, uh, the frame of it. I was in top left corner. I like to do the border first. And it's coming out beautifully. That blue is, is magnificent. So she's a pretty big pattern, 310 stitches by 232 with 12 silky colors. Um, yeah, so not for the faint of heart, but um, but not completely horrible either. Just a lot of motifs to kind of sink your teeth into. Um, so that is 2022 whip go. Again, hopefully I won't fall short of my goal. Lady of the flag will be the key in, uh, key in, in that. So uh, otherwise for 2022, let's put this down. Finish the temperature charts. Um, so hopefully I will be able to take those with me and catch up on those, finish my new design. So uh, my Permore design and the ladybugs, uh, finish the Blackwork Sal. And uh, I do have a goal late December, uh, maybe after Christmas to do a whip parade. Um, I have a bunch of whips uh, that are still in there and uh, I think I'm gonna pull them all out and see what I want to put on my um, 2023 Whipco bowl or uh, Whipco board. And of course, wanna finish the lions. Um, that is, pro I probably should have led with that. That is gonna be my um, number one priority for the next uh, couple weeks. And let's see. 
yeah, I think that's, I think that's it for, um, for today. So again, just circling all the way back, Black Friday sale uh, in the shop, 22nd to the 30th of November, 25% off uh, the patterns, uh, the PDF patterns. So go check it out. And yeah, uh, keep an eye out for some new designs coming in the next uh, month or two. Um, I think that is all I have uh, for today. Um, I'll try and jump on again uh, before I take off on vacation uh, for one more video. And I'm going to try and sneak in a stitch with me on the lines um, in between there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I know it was a long one today, but if you enjoyed it, please like and uh, subscribe and maybe share with your friends. Um, yeah, I, I love jumping on periodically just to share with you what, what I'm doing and um, where I'm going uh, with, in my cross-stitch journey. So yeah, thank, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Um, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye.